I'm trying to design this mounting plate for a PCB out of ABS plastic and it's frustrating because I have all these different iterations from the shop floor, but I got short shots, I got warpage, and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, especially because the part looks fine inside of CAD. So how can I get this thing right? How can I get it to manufacturing so I know it's gonna come back just as I need it? So in the next 15 minutes, I wanna introduce you to the insights you can gain as a designer of plastic parts using SOLIDWORKS Plastics. This is an injection molding simulation software. What does this tool do? How can we use it as part of our design process? And how does it compare with physical results? So of course, injection molded parts are all around us, from our mobile devices, our automobiles, our children's toys, or life-saving medical devices. It's one of the most common materials designers turn to for durability and affordability. But underneath the shiny plastic surfaces and intricate features and relative design freedom lies a complex manufacturing process. Let's ask Bill Hammock, YouTube's engineer guy, to explain. In principle, injection molding is simple. Melt plastic, inject it into a mold, let it cool, and then out pops a plastic product. In reality, injection molding is an intricate and complex process. An injection molding machine has three main parts. The injection unit, the mold, and the clamp. Plastic pellets in the hopper feed into the barrel of the injection unit. Inside the barrel, a screw transports the pellets forward. Heater bands wrapped around the barrel warm up the plastic pellets. As the pellets are moved forward by the screw, they gradually melt and are entirely molten by the time they reach the front of the barrel. Once enough molten plastic is in front of the screw, it ramps forward like the plunger of a syringe. In a matter of seconds, the screw injects the molten plastic into the empty part of the mold called the cavity image. The plastic solidifies in under a minute. The mold opens and the part is ejected. The mold then closes and the process repeats. As we see, the manufacturing process for injection molded parts is quite complex, and to do it right requires years of experience and intuition. Injection molding simulation technology, like SOLIDWORKS Plastics, is used by two main audiences tool makers and manufacturers, and product and component designers. Manufacturers use plastics to ask and answer specific questions in order to reduce the cost and time of relying on experience and intuition alone. After all, if I can cut my mold right the first time, I can increase my bottom line and my level of service. Now, as a designer, I wanna reduce the time and cost of relying on my manufacturer to give me feedback on the moldability of my designs, particularly as we innovate and create more complex products, I need to know what's the limit of manufacturability. Allow me to introduce you to Electronic Controls Company. They engineer lights and siren accessories for a wide variety of emergency vehicles. Before we implemented SOLIDWORKS Plastics, when we did a plastics design, we really had to rely on our tooling partners to give us feedback as to how the tool was going to react to the design we presented. We kind of had a hope for the best. And sometimes we would get parts that had sink lines in places that we didn't expect. And a lot of times that would result in a negative aesthetic. Take for instance, the 12 series light bar base. That's a very big piece of plastic. It's also very complex. And in doing the design, Nick wanted to put in a lot of features that were going to be integral to the success of that product. 12 series base is very unique because w what I did on the design part of it was integrate so many features so that we're not having to use a lot of zip ties, a lot of screws, a lot of features that would take up a lot of operator time. So we're integrating that into one solid piece. Plastics was important for multiple reasons. On the base, it was the complexity of the part, making sure it would fill. But on the lens, which is the most visual part, we have to make sure that it fills and there isn't gonna be visible flaws such as knit lines or big sink marks that would show up that someone would notice. Plastics allows us to validate that. It allowed us to run all those what ifs on these complex parts that we wanted to make part of that base. Okay, did you notice the series 12 part that Nick was working on? That's exactly the type of integrated structure that defines product innovation. Adding more functionality to one part in order to optimize for downstream assembly and operations. They were forced to rely heavily on manufacturing partner feedback 
which extended the development process and ceded power to the suppliers. So when making geometry decisions, they were hoping for the best in terms of what would come from the manufacturer. And most importantly, they wanted to create a brand new 12 series integrated component to greatly reduce assembly time and effort. Let me shift gears and talk to you more about the PCB parts that you see in front of me here. This is a plastic mounting plate like we were talking about, just ABS PC. And as you can see, the quality out of the mold isn't that great. Right away on the full shot, I see sink marks on the top and potato chipping. And just to get to this stage took a lot of iterations in the cycle settings. In this scenario, as a designer, I have three basic questions. Will it fill? Fundamentally, is this manufacturable? And how big of a machine do I need and that I'm going to pay for? And then what will it look like? Aesthetically and structurally, does this meet my quality or performance requirements? Most importantly, can I make this better? At a fundamental level, is my part even manufacturable with injection molding? Will it fill? What kind of molding capacity will be required downstream and how long is my cycle time? Decisions I make now in the modeling process can have a significant downstream cost impact. Let's take a look at the basic filling of this part. What you're seeing side by side is the physical prototype shot at four different volumes. And then on the right hand side, you're seeing the SolidWorks plastics animation of that flow front. Now, the first thing that stands out to me is the correlation between what the digital prototype estimates and on the left hand side actually running it in the physical mold. Now as a designer I'm looking at the right hand side. Are there nooks, crannies, thin features or areas where the plastic front can't reach? And what's the overall fill pattern look like? I can also get more quantifiable. And as I look at the design filling I can understand the time of that flow front as well. I can see the cycle time here is about 4.1 seconds. I also want to understand what kind of machine I'm going to need. Now, here we used an all-rounder 470E. This is the machine that we actually used to create these physical prototypes. This machine, we should probably read the manual. It indicates a few maximums that we should immediately pay attention to. For example, what's the maximum pressure this machine can output? What's the max injection volume or weight of the plastic? How much clamping force can it have? What's the reaction of that high-speed, high-pressure injection? I also might want to estimate what my total cycle time is going to be. We can get some very fundamental baseline information out from plastics. For example, my max pressure is a safe 2390 PSI, my volume is just below the maximum, and my tonnage is going to be okay, and I can estimate my initial cycle time is about 48.6 seconds. Base level like this helps me understand how hard and expensive this part is going to be to fill later on. We can see that the part can fill just fine and it's going to be safe in my machine, but well, what's this part going to look like once it's ejected from the mold? We can see on our physical examples here, there's actually a lot of defects. There's a warping out of plane that we call potato chipping. On the left hand side here, I have my CAD model. It's the idealized geometry that I envisioned in my head and that works in my final assembly on the computer. On the right hand side is our physical prototype. My goal would be to minimize that disparity between what I want and what I get back and really understand the manufacturability to see how close I am to my design intent. The first defect that really stands out to me when I examine the physical part are the sink marks. Now we're just talking a few thousandth of an inch, but with my well-polished shiny mold surface, uh, here on the top I can easily see the sink marks. What's great is Selbrick's plastics on the top here predicted these exact same sink mark magnitudes and location so right away I can understand that this part is not going to come back very pretty. And here that's going to be kind of important as it makes the bottom surface of my product. Now the next area I might want to estimate are where the weld lines are going to be which is of course where the plastic flow front melds or welds together depending on the angle. Now we can get more complicated and decide just what the angle is but more importantly this just shows based on my geometry and gate location where the front is going to come together. This is a little bit harder to see but if I bump up the contrast and zoom in on the photo here you can see the knit line comes right above the square knockout. Another piece of feedback I'd want from a cosmetic or structural standpoint is the warpage. On the bottom you can see the physical prototype and on the top you can see the digital version. Now both estimate pretty much the exact same shape, that out of plain potato chipping that we notice in all these different prototypes. So obviously as a designer I'll be able to check 
if my features are going to cause this type of deformation. Now warpage can be defined as a dimensional distortion in the molded product after it's ejected from the mold at the end of the process. And warpage is sometimes called potato chipping because the part tends to appear wavy. And there's actually a lot of reasons why this potato chipping might happen. Inadequate injection pressure or time, inadequate residence, barrel temperature too low, nozzle temperature too low, excessive stress buildup, small gates, mold temperatures too low, uneven mold temperatures, non-uniform ejection, improper flow rates. This is a lot of variables, but all characteristics that we can simulate using SolidWorks Plastics as a manufacturer. Again, as a designer, I just want to make sure my geometry is going to come back as I see it. <laughs> we know it doesn't look the best. It's probably not going to meet the form, fit, and function in my electronics mount requirement. Uh, but can I make it better? That's the whole idea here, right? So let's take the information we just got out of plastics and return to my design. We'll then rerun and get the information. So let's make a plastics driven revision. Now the first thing I'm going to do is decrease the wall thickness. Now it's, it's a balance. I can't make a wall too thin or else the pressure requirement to fill will be too high. Uh, but if I make it too thick, then I get these sink marks and warpage. I'm also going to take one of the ribs and thin it out. I'm going to actually create a hollow instead of a solid peg and then once again decrease the diameter. Now a few quick changes to the CAD model and we can rerun in plastics and see what kind of impact our quick design changes had. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look at those same numbers we began with. Did I make any changes that may have increased the pressure requirements or clamping tonnage or violated some of the rules of my machine? And I see that I didn't. In fact, I was able to decrease the volume, decrease the pressure, decrease the reaction force, and also decrease the fill time. All in all, I'm still within the operational parameters of the machine. Now evaluating those sink marks. I can see on the right hand Rev B that I've pretty much eliminated all the salient ones from my first revision. In, in fact, now every one is just about a thousandth of an inch, which, depending on my mold finish, should be acceptable. Let's also examine the weld lines. Weld lines are inevitable, but I can validate that changing this design didn't move them to an undesirable location. I can also change the geometry to make the weld lines come together at a more favorable angle. And if I'm going to get into manufacturing, I can start to recommend the gate locations that provide the best weld mark locations. Of course, the warpage. <laughs> We've seen that the top was pretty bad in the first revision. There were a lot of thick areas that were just really changing the cooling times and creating that internal stressing. Looking at the warpage by reducing some of the thicknesses of the features and the overall body, we've done a great job removing that out of plane warpage. And well, we cut the fill time from 4.1 seconds to 3.7. That's about a 10% reduction. So overall, we answered some very basic questions today. Is this part going to fill? Well, yes, with the right settings. But we also saw it wasn't going to look very good. So I was able to use some of the insight from plastics and then validate some design decisions by rerunning through the plastics analysis. Now, this is a pretty simple part. So let's return to the electronic controls company. Now, remember, their challenges were just what we we're talking about today but with a very real world example. By implementing SOLIDWORKS Plastics, we really have been able to pull that instant feedback in-house, reducing the cycle time it used to take while waiting for our partners to give us that very same feedback. So we use plastics to validate a few different things. One is, is the design, whether it's manufacturable. We also use it to check features, whether to add or remove or, or change the dimensions of them. We were able to optimize our design to say, okay, we can make this out of a single part. It can be, uh, this thick of plastic will be strong enough and the customer wouldn't see any performance degradation, but you know, we can offer this at a lower, lower cost. One advantage for us in implementing SOLIDWORKS Plastic is the ability to understand how the part is going to behave in tooling. That's extremely important to us, whereas we make optical plastic parts where we have light passing through them. So any deformation in the surface is a tremendous impact on performance. Additionally, we want to make sure that those surfaces are blemish free of weld lines or knit lines. So as you've seen, Echo uses a host of SolidWorks products to bring their passion for safety to their customers. Thanks Jeremy and thanks to the Electronic Controls Group for sharing that story and some of the benefits they saw using injection molding simulation. Now, you know what I think is great? 
is that the electronic controls group are also using structural simulation and flow simulation to make sure their products are going to perform safely and optimally out in the field conditions of emergency response. In summary, SOLIDWORKS Plastics holds a lot of value, not just for the mold manufacturer and the injection molder himself, but for the part designer as well. To get that early feedback and avoiding these manufacturing difficulties and not wait for the manufacturer feedback. We can improve our part quality without sacrificing performance or aesthetics and overall decrease the time it takes to get to market. Now, most critically, I think this drives innovation. It allowed Nick, for example, to create the Series 12 integrated structure that decreased his operation and assembly time. SOLIDWORKS Plastics, it's more and more becoming a critical part of the designer's toolkit. And I want you to think, can SOLIDWORKS Plastics help you on your next project?